Welcome to Rockstar Productions, where in this video, we're gonna show you how to fix this problem once and for all. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, Gary here with Rockstar Productions. Now, if this is your first time to the channel before we get started here today, I just wanna take a second and say thanks for stopping by and checking out our video that we have here today talking about the Dreamcast. I really hope you do like it. If you do like what you see here, I invite you to check out some of the other videos that we have here on the channel featuring other mod work and repairs that we've done with other systems. And if you really like what you see, do me a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button and that bell notification. That way each and every time we do upload new content, you're kept informed and up to date. And do me a huge favor too. If you like what you see here, hit that thumbs up button. If you think we need to improve, go ahead and give us a thumbs down. But if you leave us a thumbs down, let us know down in the comments what you want to see improve. Because if you just give it a thumbs down and don't say what you don't like, we just keep doing the same stuff over and over again. So if you have a Sega Dreamcast, you may be familiar with this screen here. This means that the rechargeable CMOS battery on the motherboard needs to be replaced. Now, unlike other systems like the Saturn, the direct predecessor to this system where you could just pop the battery out, pop a new one in, the Dreamcast has a hardwired battery inside the system. Oh, and if you didn't notice, I said it's rechargeable too. That's right, you can't use just a regular CR2032 button battery inside the Dreamcast. If you do, you could have a bit of a problem on your hands as those are not rechargeable batteries. You could run into an issue where the battery could explode inside on your system. That would be a bad thing. So what we did here is we have actually ordered a battery holder for the battery and a replacement battery itself. And that's what we're gonna do in this video here. We're gonna walk you through the steps of disassembling your Dreamcast, swapping out the parts, swapping out the pieces, and hooking it back up and making sure we didn't screw up our system. Let's get started. So we have our Dreamcast on the bench. Before we start anything, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit the power button. And there's a very specific reason why. There are capacitors in this system that should be fully discharged before you do any work. So power cycle it a couple of times just to discharge any capacitors that are in here. Now, I've not taken one of these apart before, but I think it's just one, two, three, and maybe a fourth screw underneath the where the broadband adapter would go. Oh, great. Adrian's gonna make me void my warranty after I've had this system for a couple years. Yep, there is another one underneath there. So leave that right like that. And we're just gonna pull out these screws. Now, uh, the holes where the screws are in, a little bit too small for me to be able to get my drill driver in, so I've gotta do it by hand. Tweezers to grab that guy there. And just for proof, yes, I do have a legit copy of Hydro Thunder. I was actually trying to play. And this should just lift off relatively easily. Ta-da! So where we're gonna be working with is this board here. We'll give you a closer look. So for some super stupid reason, they attached the battery here to the controller board. Uh, so we'll go ahead and let's see, one, two, three, four, a ribbon cable and a, uh, that's the uh, fan power cable it looks like is what we're gonna have to take off of there. Uh, so with this, let me see if my Yes, my power screwdriver bits will work. Makes things go a lot faster. We're gonna set those aside here. And just pull out that ribbon cable. Yes, we can, the whole thing just popped right out, so we'll set that aside. Last little thing we're trying to do here is get the fan disconnected. There we go. This whole thing should come out now. There's nothing else really keeping it in there that I can tell. So now that we've got the fan disconnected right from there, we're ready to pull out the board. Now, this shroud is actually underneath uh, a, a tray or a, um, uh, it just there's another piece that's holding that in. So what you do, you can actually grab it by the battery, angle it up and push it back and it should pop right out, just like that. So this is all we need to be working with right now. So here you can see the problem child right here, this guy here. Now, you can just get another battery to solder in and out, uh, but what we're doing is a more permanent fix. Now, this is not a CR2032, 
like this one here is hopefully, there you go, you can see the CR2032. This, the CR2032 is not rechargeable, it's just a straight up lithium battery. What's in there, and I have one right here to show you, so as you can see, this is an ML2032. That is a rechargeable battery that will go in here. What we also have is this guy here, which is basically just a battery holder for that size battery back there. So instead of having to replace the whole kit and caboodle and break out the soldering iron again, if this happens in the future, we can go ahead and just swap out the battery. Now, speaking of swapping the battery, there's one, two, three pads. We're gonna initially reflow the solder before we actually undo the solder. So we're gonna fire up our soldering iron here. So you can hear my desoldering iron heating up in the background. What we're gonna do while that's doing that is we're gonna hit these three pins with some fresh solder and some no clean solder flux. It just makes everything a whole lot easier in the end. And my iron is tinned and hot. Coming in hot. I'm just gonna do just a one, two, three. Now what we're doing is introducing fresh solder here so it's easier to unsolder and basically break that connection. We are up to temperature here, so we're gonna heat that up. Actually, I'm gonna throw my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. There we go, and we're finally out. The pads look good. I haven't pulled out any of the uh, the pads and whatnot here. So now we are done with our desoldering iron, so we can turn that off and let that cool off. So we are gonna clean up our, uh, our board a little bit here. We've just got some isopropyl alcohol and a firm bristle brush. We'll just get that crud off of there. And again, if you look at that side of the board, you can see everything looks really nice and clean. Now, the nice thing about this battery holder is it's basically the pinouts are exactly like the pinouts for the battery holder we just removed. Insert those, they should drop right in. There we go. And now this is going to be a super easy solder job. Just boop, 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 just hit all three of them. Again, we're gonna just give it a little touch of no clean to help with the adherence. There's one, there's two, and there's three. That's it. That's all the soldering we need to do to solder in the new holder. We can turn our iron off. When you are done, your solder pad should all look nice and shiny. If they look dull, hit it again. You probably have a cold solder joint. But now again, we're gonna just hit this with a little bit of isopropyl. Grab our brush, clean that up. I've got another little bit of a finer one to get the extra extra little bit off. And this is now ready for our battery. Now the nice thing too is because of the way that this solders onto the board, it's polarized. It can only go on one way. Now I do want to make sure that I have the right battery. That's the ML2032 right there. And the positive side goes towards the back. Just pops right in. Now we're ready to reinstall it into our system. So first things first is we're gonna plug the fan back in here. And get everything aligned. So what I find is easier is come in at a bit of an angle. And then it drops right in. Need to get our ribbon cable back in. And like this. So that was interesting, the LED lit. That tells me that it had some power. All right, now we're ready to put our screws back in. And when threading back into plastic, if you've watched this channel for any period of time, you know my piece of advice here is you always unscrew slightly to seat the screw in. And if you are using any kind of a power screwdriver, set the clutch super loose and then finish tightening down by hand and then on this last one make sure you're not pinching the wire for the fan when you tighten everything down having a tweezers can make this 
a little bit easier to set the screw in the boss. And we're gonna go ahead and finish tightening it down. While I've got this open, this is actually the first time I've ever been inside this system. I just double checked to make sure that there's no excess dust or gunk or everything. And overall, this system is pretty clean. I'm gonna put it back, put the lid back on with the top open. Just dropped right in place. That was really, really easy. First screw in. You know, Adrian may never know. Oh, that looks perfect. We'll slide our, so that's not a broadband adapter. That's just a regular phone line adapter. We'll drop that back in. Drop the other two screws in and tighten them down. And now our Dreamcast is ready for us to finally play and not have to get the dreaded issue with the time having to be set every time we power it up. Let's test it out. So here we have the moment of truth. I've got my Dreamcast and everything reconnected. We are going to power it on and it should still pop up with set the time. Completely expecting that, but we're gonna test it out fully here in a second because I still have to set it. So we are, hey Google, what's today's date? All right, we should be good now. Everything is set. So great, I was able to set everything that works right. Now, one thing I have done is I've swapped out my copy of Hydro Thunder for a copy of Fighting Force 2 because Hydro Thunder does not play well with VGA cables. And that's how I have my Dreamcast hooked up to my OSSC. And I'm sure more than a few of you early on were saying, Hydro Thunder doesn't work with the OSSC. I figured it out, I Googled it. But, so what I've also done, I disconnected the power from the Dreamcast hit the power button to discharge any capacitors because I want to make sure that the onboard rechargeable battery is actually storing the information for date and time. So we're going to go ahead, power it on, see what we get. Fingers crossed I didn't screw this thing up. It's a good sign. That's a really good sign. That's an exceptional sign. It is loading the game and it did not ask me to input date and time again. Um, it's one of those things that it doesn't hurt anything. It just it's a pain to take care of, and I'm glad that I now have a permanent fix set up. I'm also glad that I have the Striker DC from Retro Fighters. These are amazing controllers for the Dreamcast. I've played more Dreamcast since this has come out than I ever have before. If you haven't checked these out, if you're a fan of the Dreamcast, and if you're like me and you didn't like the stock controller, give these a shot. They are definitely really, really good. So there you have it though. You know, in a few easy steps, we were able to swap out our old CMOS battery that was dead, install a battery holder and a new rechargeable battery, so that way if that battery does die again, how many more times can I say battery, 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 but uh, if that does happen to die again, you can go ahead and just unplug and plug in a new one. It should be years, years, a decade between when you have to replace that battery. And thankfully, you're not losing any save data or anything. You are only losing the CMOS for the time and date. So pretty cool. Um, really simple install. I'm glad that I did it. Now, if you do have any other questions or comments about anything that I showed you here today, as always, feel free to email me, rocksolidmail at gmail.com. Send me a message through Twitter at rocksolidstudios, Facebook at facebook.com slash rocksolidproductions, and check out what we're posting to Instagram at instagram.com slash rocksolidproductionsgk. Always, you can get a hold of me. Plus, you can also leave a comment down below if you have questions, need more clarification. If you want me to do this for you, I can do that too. Pretty simple and straightforward. Contact me. Let's talk. I can go ahead and get your system up and running again. Uh, very excited for this. Also, if you are looking for that Striker DC, check out my friend at CastlemaniaGames.com. He has all of the colors up and available for order at the time of this filming. I love the red one. is my personal favorite. The classic gray is great too. There's a smoke one that is just gorgeous. I'm glad that I actually have all of those in my collections. The cool thing is to use promo code ROCKSOLID10, you save 10% off of most items on the website. Very, very cool. My name is Gary. This has been Rock Solid Productions. And our look, we're ready to play Fighting Force. Look how beautiful that looks. Uh, OSSC, two times line multiplying, VGA cables. Pretty beautiful way to play. Does have some compatibility issues. My name is Gary. This has been Rock Solid Productions. And we showed you how to swap out the CMOS battery on your Sega Dreamcast.
Thank you for watching. I hope to see you soon. Thank you for watching this video. If you would like to support the future of Rockstar Productions, you can do so by visiting our Patreon page at patreon.com slash rocksolid. For as little as a dollar a month, $12 a year, you'll get early access to all of our video content, exclusive content, and a whole lot more. You can also become a channel member here on YouTube for as little as $1.99 a month. And with that, you get a badge next to your name when you comment or post on the channel. And you are acknowledged whether you are a channel member or a Patreon supporter at the end of each and every one of our videos. You can also support the channel by visiting our Teespring store on screen now, where we have t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, masks, cell phone cases, and much more. Again, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon.